Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. This is Simon with Avatrade, and welcome to our webinar. Uh, we're starting our weekly webinar, Trading Prospects, Mapping Out for a Week Ahead. And of course, special welcome to new people. Uh, I'll introduce myself in a few words. My name is Simon Friedman. I'm a senior account manager with Avatrade. And uh, I've been trading for almost 24 years. I started in the year 2000 as a prop trader in New York City. And then after 11 years doing that, I moved into a different way of trading and started to mentor and educate other traders. And I'm very happy to currently I'm able to help and assist our customers at Ava Trade. The agenda of the webinar, very simple. We stick to the same plan pretty much. Uh, we, we speak about indices, stocks, commodities, and Forex. And as I always mention, the purpose of this webinar is really to stick the plan, to have a plan. And I, I always quote what traders like to say, you plan your trade and then you trade your plan. This way, you can be stay, staying out of trouble and not having any impulsive trading, uh, which is very tempting. It doesn't mean it guarantees success, but definitely preparing yourself and having a plan uh, improves the results significantly. Risk warning, uh, you can find a full statement at avatrade.com website. What we do here, it's purely educational. We do not suggest any trades. Social media channels, please subscribe. You have uh, Telegram, you have uh, for, former Twitter, which is X now. I miss that bird, I keep on saying that. And um, YouTube is my favorite. You can find uh, a lot of information there, tutorials, educational material. And of course, the webinars are being recorded and posted on YouTube. So don't stress if you miss a webinar or you're not able to watch the live webinar, you can always go back and watch it on YouTube, being posted as a recording. And of course, if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe, click on that like, you do like it, don't fake it. And please feel free to share. Also, I realize I have a lot of views on this webinar, but not many likes, so I'm a little bit confused. Uh, if you really like it, uh, and you keep on watching it, uh, please uh, click on that like so more people can watch it. Because I think there's an algorithm on YouTube. If there's uh, enough likes, they're posting it more. I don't know how it works, just a thought. And uh, definitely click on the bell so you'll be notified when new things are coming up. Okay, so a um, few things. Uh, last week was intense. We had uh, two highlights that moved the markets. One was the, the inflation, not the, not the inflation, but the interest rate decision after two meeting, a two day meeting. Uh, of course, no change was kind of uh, priced in, no change in interest rate on Wednesday. And then press conference was very interesting. This time I was able to watch it. I usually try to watch it if, I, if I'm able, if I'm available. So I watched the whole press conference. Um, a, Powell looked a little bit more energetic this time. Uh, and then uh, one of the highlights of the of the press conference of the questions that uh, he had to address one was the uh, of uh, interest hikes and he kind of uh, clearly said that they don't see any interest hike hikes coming and there was very positive market reacted to it right away so that was a positive thing otherwise. Uh, the same narrative, uh, it's all data dependent and so on. And then we have Friday NFPs, which saved the day. Uh, we had uh, less jobs added. I think we added 175,000 jobs, uh, down from 315 jobs in uh, March added. And consensus was for 235,000, so it's less than consensus. Uh, also, unemployment rose to 3.9 to 3, uh, from 3.8. And the wage growth slowed to 0 0.2 from last month to 0 0.3. So that was kind of a, uh, encouraging for the markets. The markets uh, took off after the uh, NFP numbers. So uh, also we had uh, Apple moving up on Friday almost 6%. They had uh, quarterly results. They were not great, but better than expected. And uh, 
the negative uh, effect in China was less than expected. And also a big thing they announced that are uh, planning on uh, purchasing back uh, additional 110 billion uh, in uh, stock buyback, which is very good for the company. It's, it makes the, the shares less diluted and uh, raises the value of the company. So uh, uh, also when the number came in, this is the 30 minute chart. When NFPs came, we had to move on 10 year yield significant and that's where uh, gold reacted to a dollar uh, sold. And so we'll take a look at the specifics when we get to, to specific instruments. But there was a strong reaction on the market and NFP, as I said, saved today. So uh, based on some analysts on the uh, Apple results and other things, uh, some of them predicting uh, a rally in May, which contradicts uh, the usual saying, sell in May and go away. That's something very popular among traders. So it's going to be interesting to watch it. So we are in May. We're starting uh, strong recovery after the recent sell-off and uh, see how things go. Now, economic calendar, a few words for new people about economic calendar and importance of it. So here, uh, first of all, you can find it on our web trader or the mobile app. Also, you can just Google it. There's a lot of providers uh, with uh, economic calendar. It's public information. It's uh, being announced ahead of time so you can prepare yourself. Here, I take high impact events only, otherwise it would take uh, a lot of space and some things are not so relevant, but you can uh, focus on what you trade and where you trade, so you can filter through things if you'd like. And as far as importance, uh, whether you use the calendar for your trading or not, but if you are actively trading, it's important to know at least that certain things are coming at certain times, so you won't be caught uh, by surprise, like NFPs, for instance, move the market, or interest rate decisions move the market, uh, other data move the market significantly when uh, uh, volatility increases. Okay, so these are the things for upcoming week. We have on Monday, we have service PMI from China, and then uh, chairman from a Swiss National Bank speaks. Uh, Tuesday, uh, it's over Australia, looks like it, interest rate decision. Uh, they also have press conference, so we'll be watching the retail sales from European Union on Tuesday as well. And Thursday, very important for UK. If you remember, we mentioned that uh, last time the deputy of uh, governor of Bank of England said that they're very happy. Not, uh, I don't want to quote it, but pretty much the numbers are better than expected, and they, there's on the table possible interest rate cut coming up soon. So some say it's in June, now we're in May, uh, you never know, it could be. Uh, we're not gonna guess, we're just gonna watch what happens. So we have interest rate decision from Bank of England, and then the minutes, policy report, and so on. And the speech, of course, uh, by Governor Bailey. So that's Thursday, all about UK. It's all about pound and FTSE. Uh, Friday, gross domestic product GDP from UK, uh, employment data from Canada, this time the separate, usually they report together with the US on the first Friday of the month, this time is a week later. And this number is important, Michigan consumer sentiment from US and inflation number from China on Saturday, CPI. Now there are more things, I think also on Thursdays there's uh, imbalances, uh, Export import numbers from China also very important. I, I think they should mark them in high uh, impact, but they're not. But they are also on Thursday. Okay, so that's the economic calendar. We'll be definitely watching that. Uh, so Australia to be fo focused on uh, UK definitely, and of course US. And in general, we'll, we'll see how this week plays out after this uh, robust move on Apple and uh, NFPs affecting the markets to the upside. Okay, we're gonna move now to the platform and uh, try to go through the instruments. Uh, what we'll be looking at today, we'll take a look at Apple. We're gonna browse through uh, the uh, major big player stocks 
also a uh, few other things uh, in stocks. Now, um, I'm going to focus a lot on commodities today. We'll talk about oil, gold, copper, natural gas, cocoa, sugar, palladium, corn, and soybeans. And then we'll move to commodities, sorry, from commodities to currencies. Of course, US dollar, Japanese yen is in focus big time. We're going to take a look at majors. And uh, Canadian dollar is in focus as oil is been uh, uh, having some weak days okay and we'll wrap up uh, taking a look at bitcoin okay so uh, let's start with apple apple reported as i said um, it wasn't a great report but it was much better than expected so uh, they had less losses in china uh, the big China, they also took into consideration the Hong Kong and uh, other areas. So uh, uh, Apple gapped, as I said, Friday, even with the closing lower that the opening uh, Friday uh, was about 6% gain for Apple. And uh, not just the Apple stock was happy. Actually, the one of the biggest uh, holders, if not the bigger holder, the Berkshire or Buffett's company, uh, they gained through this move uh, significantly. I think they just gained $9 billion through this. And I, I just dig the numbers in. And uh, here's the quote from the Apple rose 6% Friday to 183.38 after reporting encouraging financial results late Thursday for March quarter. Berkshire Apple stake is now worth $165 billion and uh, against the cost of around 30 billion. So uh, they bought Apple, I think between uh, 2016 to 2018 uh, at about $35 a share. So they're very happy there holding the Apple stock. Now what's upcoming for Apple, very important. On May 7th, as usual, they uh, announced the new product. So they're launching the new iPads and uh, uh, on uh, June 10th, they will uh, show us uh, about the AI strategy, which is very, very important. And in fall time, iPhone 16 is coming. So they have a lot of things in the pipeline. In any event, after being really, really weak for a while, and so uh, if not all, most of it China related, we had a nice bounce in Apple, right? So let's take a look at other major ones. Uh, Facebook, after the reports, trying to recover. It's really trying to close that gap. Uh, it's moving with the market, moving up, of course. Uh, Netflix, same thing. If you remember that uh, statement they made that uh, starting next year, they will not be showing the amount of subscribers edit. Uh, market reacted negatively to it, slowly recover, similar picture. Uh, Amazon, looking strong. Tesla, um, since the, the earnings and other developments in China, other things, it was strong. But take a look on the strong market. Tesla is not moving higher. I would be really worried here uh, on the relative strength. On the super strong market, Tesla is not moving higher. So let's watch what's uh, cooking there. Google gap up and holding so all the big stocks are looking good microsoft uh, again jumped above 400 so uh, on specific stocks uh, a few things pfizer had good earnings where are you pfizer here you are reacted nicely to the upside and continuing so now we facing this uh, resistance from march 28th uh, let's see if, uh, if we manage to break it and continue higher. There was a lot of actions here. If you look left, uh, a lot of attempts to break it. Once even we closed above it, but then we sell. So uh, let's see, Pfizer. Now Teva, our favorite Teva, the one that we kind of talk about almost every week. After this uh, nice correction, we are moving higher. We are retesting 14. The question, the big question is, are we going to get out of this? Uh, uh, range 
that we've been, like I mentioned to you a few times from 2019, or we're gonna face resistance again? That's a big question. Okay, so let's move to commodities. I wanna focus on commodities a lot today. Oil, been super weak. And uh, this time it's kind of a fear of supply uh, is being kind of uh, removed. And there's a lot of talks that uh, the peace process is on the way in the Middle East. I don't know how true that is. And uh, I mean, we all need peace, but to be realistic, uh, I guess we'll find out what the story there. There's a negotiation going on uh, between Hamas and Israel with the parties uh, involved, Qatar, Egypt, USA. Uh, let's see, in any event, since uh, things look a little softer as they look at them, oil has been selling. And uh, we are below 80, first of all, and we're approaching the level from which uh, after playing with it, with this number for a while, around 77 and a half, we made a high from here. So that's on the supply side. It looks like, okay, no fear of shortage of supply, right? But uh, on the demand, uh, demand should be kicking in as China is doing well, as you know, that, uh, you know, I was skipped the, the indices. I'm going to take a look at indices. I apologize. Uh, China just reminded me of that. So uh, on China, we had uh, a nice move last week uh, above this uh, was it 12 and a half area. And it looks like we're holding that. So with China, as you know, um, I like to bring four assets, which is oil, copper, Australian, and New Zealand dollars. So copper, uh, after correcting here, it looks like it's coming back up. And Australian dollar, uh, of course, it's reacted to China, but also reacted to the weakness of the US dollar and New Zealand dollar as well. So let's just run quickly through, and this is very, very important. So here's your reaction on S&Ps. We did close above the previous high here. So it looks like we're turning back up. Uh, we are facing 50-day moving average here. NASDAQ was the strongest two consecutive days, also broke to the previous similar picture. Of course, Apple pushed it higher. Uh, Dow Jones as well, we did close above. So all three US indices closed above the previous resistance here. We all are ab uh, below the 50 moving average. We could be facing it this week. Uh, German index has been weak. Uh, we're sitting right on 50 day moving average. It didn't react strongly to the US, uh recovery on friday let's see what's happening this week and uk is continuing i guess they are uh putting a lot of uh, bets on uh possible interest rate cut as uh we are in a brand new territory on the uk FTSE, and we are continuing higher actually it's stronger than uh us indices so a big pressure on that uh, decision from uk this week all right, so that's as far as indices. Let's let's go back to commodities. We we covered the oil. Uh, let's take a look at copper, as we said. Uh, after a few days of correction, we're on the way up again. We did uh, break below the channel that we spoke about, and now we're kind of challenging it again. Natural gas looks very good. Take a look. It looks similar to the indices, this, the two consecutive days and, and higher than the previous resistance. It looks very good. And for new people, I just want to share with you what we spoke about uh, 2016, 2020, 2024. Kind of a seasonal or a circular, you can call it. Uh, six, in 2016, around this time of the year, we moved higher than uh, April, May of uh, 2020. A big move started, of course, it had to do with the wars and everything else, uh, pandemics and other things. And here we're starting again. So far, second consecutive month to the upside on the weekly chart. looks very nicely. We're at the channel. We are breaking out of it. So natural gas gives some hopes to traders. Now, not to be overexcited, we are facing around this area a strong resistance. And let's see if we manage to break it. But the momentum looks very good. 
Uh, Coco, we've been talking about Coco, champion. He's been a loser lately. I mean, it's about time that some profit will be taken. Now, the big question, is this a uh, reversal or is this a uh, correction? And we're going higher. I mean, nobody knows. Uh, we did uh, have a significant move to the downside. We're talking about from 11.7 to 700. And we did close on Friday higher than this a previous support. So we'll be watching. It's hard to say anything because on the supply side, I don't see any, any improvements. But as I mentioned a few times, uh, when uh, demand will slow down on the high prices, we might see a sell-off happening, and it is happening so far. Okay, uh, sugar. We spoke about sugar as it's been sitting here nicely, uh, trying to break to the downside, but not able to. So something is building up. On the weekly chart, we are around a strong support here. Uh, we'll be continue watching sugar. It has been channeling between uh, 1917 and 2012. Palladium, a magic 950 number. I always put platinum by mistake. Palladium, where are you? Here we go. Uh, take a look. Every time we try to break below, we come right back to 950. So we we'll definitely will continue watching Palladium. And again, as here, when we start building above 950, the up move might happen. And of course, the opposite, uh, we are holding so far. Uh, the low here was on uh, February 28, the low was 916. We do try to challenge that as well. So we'll continue watching Palladium on the possible move to the upside. Or if we break that, we, we might be going and looking for a lower low here. Corn and beans. And I want to read for you uh, something from uh, Wall Street Journal. Uh, I'm quoting here. Corn and soybeans are slightly higher, catching some support from the Biden administration finalization of its GREET, G-R-E-E-T, model, which provides guidance for the tax credit for Sustainable Aviation Fuel, SAF abbreviation, with corn and soybeans being feedstock for, for various renewable fuels, the guidance is helpful development to help determine grain demand from fuel producers. Basically, they do use um, corn and soybeans to produce uh, natural fuel. I don't know how natural that is. And uh, I guess, they are, uh, based on the latest decision by Biden's administration, will be receiving some tax credits, which Americans like very much. So, um, trying to find corn and soybeans. Take a look. After really, really long sell-off in corn, it starts bouncing here. So the last few days was very strong. We are between 50 and 100 moving average. This is a very positive news. So it might continue higher because we are still very low here. So there's a possibility. Of course, we might uh, retrace and uh, look for some supports just to confirm it. Everything's possible. Or we might just continue flying here as the fuel does. Soybeans, the same thing. Very nice, after almost double bottom here, we are challenging now the resistance around these levels, which just broke through 100 moving average here. So corn and soybeans back on radar, we're gonna be watching them, okay? FX, we start with dollar index, and we'll, I just wanna see the, show you the reaction to it. So the initial reaction was down. This was the first half an hour after the NFP numbers. And then slowly, we not so slowly, but it did take some time. Two hours it took us almost to get back, and then we just went uh, almost flatline here. So we are below 105. We are below all the averages, but the recovery did happen. So I guess it wasn't very convincing for the dollars to sell off. Initial move, first reaction, and then almost recovery. So we'll be watching what's next now. Uh, 
the majors are back to key levels. If you remember on uh, pound, uh, this channel was uh, our attention here at 126 to 128. We did retest briefly and we came right back down. So we are uh, challenging that 126, trying to enter that channel again. And the same thing for Euro. 108 is being challenged. Take a look, funny enough. 108.12, we hit that wall there and went right back. Yen, very tricky. There was an intervention. And this time it looks like it was a successful one because it is sustained uh, with a nice move from over 160 to uh, to below 153. That's 700 pips move on Yen and it is holding. So it looks like Bank of Japan is being a little bit successful. They spent uh, a lot of billions of dollars to manage that by buying US dollars. So let's see. Uh, that's on yen, right? So across the board, huge moves. Yen is showing strength finally across the board. All right now on the opposite side canadian dollar uh mostly because of the sell-off on oil it's been it's been weak now not so weak against us because it's sold but against other currencies super super weak I'm just trying to find all the theme of canadian dollar here aussie cad is actually at the very interesting level here we are retesting uh this uh highly congested zone and uh, it looks like we're having resistance around here the same thing on uh, nzd cad not as high as australian but facing immediate resistance around these levels here so uh, again what could save canadian dollar now First of all, the numbers are coming up for inflation and everything else. Uh, not Sorry, not inflation, but the employment data that's on Friday. And we'll be watching oil, of course. As you know, uh, Canadian dollar is super sensitive to oil prices. So uh, let's have those. But for now, it's super weak. All the currencies are strong against Canadian dollar currently, especially Australian dollar here, which reminds us on the decision on Australian dollar this week, right? on uh, Bank of Australia interest rate decision. So we'll be watching Australian dollar as well. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, again, US dollar as being a key currency. Just to remind us again, we had, we already sold into these things, right? So uh, press conference, uh, interest rate decisions, I think dollar reacted negatively, first of all, when they said no hikes, and that was right here on Wednesday. Then Thursday continuation, Friday with NFPs, it did add a little bit to losses, but I recovered a little bit. So it was already uh, sold into the NFPs. Okay, and let's take a quick look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is recovering back above 60. You remember last week we spoke about, spoke about things that uh, this uh, financial institution, I already forgot the name of it. I'm trying to find out. Corporation, uh, here it is. Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, DTCC, they announced that ETFs of, uh, of uh, cryptocurrencies starting April 30th are not gonna be used as financial collateral. So the reaction was very strong to the downside. Now, we're back about 60,000. So we're clearly now in the channel between 60,000 or six, uh, 59 and a half and 65 and a half, 5,000 channel. We'll be watching what's next with cryptocurrencies. Okay, so uh, to put it all together, uh, we had a significant week with uh, which trigger uh, self in the dollar and move up in, uh, in the equity markets. And that's due to positive comments of Powell, then uh, good earnings from Apple, and uh, wicked and expected uh, NFP numbers and uh, unemployment rate going uh, tick lower. Uh, we are continuing the earnings season. This week, it's about 50 stocks uh, reporting uh, out of uh, S&P 500. 
we have few interest rate decisions. We have other things that we went through on the economic calendar. Uh, make your plan, uh, watch your risks, enjoy the weekend, get ready for the intense week. All the best and uh, God willing, we should be back next week. Take care.